on this edition of the Writing of God, we get to speak to the expert in celestial events, Mark Biltz, who did the incredible research on the blood moons and now has come out with a new book, America at War 2024, about the total eclipses that have been seen throughout America and what they foretell since the Revolutionary War. So stay put, we're going to it right now. Join ancient language linguist, author, educator, and biblical archaeologist, Dr. Miles Jones, as he explores the writing of God. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the writing of God. Today, we have the incredible pleasure of talking with Mark Biltz of Shaddai Ministries. This is fantastic because he has a new book on the eclipses and their meaning for America called America at War 2024. Did I get that right? But yes. Mark, it's so good to see you again. And uh, I'm still reading in depth your your last groundbreaking work, which was on the blood moons. So I'd like to talk about that work first, if you don't mind. And maybe we could start by explaining to our listeners and our viewers what a tetrad is. Oh, yeah, great. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your program. Uh, but a tetrad... The privilege is mine. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, a tetrad means four total lunar eclipses in a row without any partials, penumbral in between. Now, according to NASA, I, I only like to use science, math, and the Bible. And according to NASA, if you go to their website, there's been 12,000 total lunar eclipses over a 5,000 year time period. So that's a pretty good wow. average that we can draw from. And of that, over that time frame, those 12,000 eclipses uh, over 5,000 years, you only get one total lunar eclipse every year and a half. Okay, wow. so to have four, it would take six years to have four total lunar eclipses. But guess what? Here in 2014 and 2015, I noticed four total lunar eclipses in one year and a half. So this is beyond the statistics. It's astronomical, I like to say. And so mm -hmm. I tried to find out, okay, what's going on? And I was in my prayer closet about four in the morning, which literally was my walk-in closet. And all of a sudden, the Lord just hit me with, put them on the biblical calendar. So I put it on the biblical calendar and noticed the four total lunar eclipses in a, just a year and a half happened on Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. And Both so years, two years running. Yes. And so it's like, oh my goodness, I this is uh, unbelievable. So I had to find out when was the last time it happened. So I looked and it happened right at the 1967 Jerusalem War. And then I looked again. It happened when Israel became a nation. And then I looked again. It was uh, right after 1492 when all the Jews were expelled from Spain. And I even went to 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. There were solar lunar eclipses all around the destruction of the temple. And we know from Genesis 1.14, God created the sun and the moon for signs. Right, he did. I mean, That's exactly right. And these, these tetrads, four blood moons, two years running on the feast days of Passover and Sukkot, both years, have always been very fateful moments for, for the Hebrews. Not always a disaster, but a very fateful and challenging moment. In, uh, the, before this, we've had three of them in the past 75 years. At the independence of Israel and the pitched into war with the Arabs, at the, the Six-Day War where they went against five armies, Right, and at the Hamas tunnel war in 2014-15, just back around the corner. I have a, a story about this because I recovered the Hebrew Gospels from Catalonia in 2014 and 15, right during that tetrad. And awesome. they had been taken from Spain in 1493 and 94 during, there, there's been 500 years since the 
the last tetrad, and and the next one in history was almost 500 years previously at the expulsion of the Jews and the Messianics from Spain. The Messianics were fleeing the Inquisition, and they took their Hebrew Gospels with them, the Hebrew Gospels from Catalonia, which I recovered at the last test trad in 2014, 2015, and was able to do services from those manuscripts that hadn't been done in 500 years. It was a really moving moment for me, and I know you, you know a lot about that. So uh, tell us, tell us what you, the significance of these tetrads that you've noticed. Well, they've always meant war, and the, the, what they say within mm -hmm. Judaism is uh, the blood moon or the total lunar eclipse refers to Israel. A total solar eclipse refers to the Gentile nations as far wow. as judgment or things coming. Well, guess what I found out? It's mind blowing. This is what's in my book, America at War. I finally found out what the 2014, 2015 blood moons were all about. It wasn't until recently. I always knew they meant war, but get a load of this. The 19, well, let me say this. The year of Jubilee can only be proclaimed on Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. 1973 was the year of Jubilee. And it was on Yom Kippur that the Yom Kippur War happened. Well, the 1967-68 blood moons was a seven-year warning before wow. the first day of the Jubilee cycle was the Yom Kippur War. And the 2014-2015 tetrad was a seven-year warning of the last day, the very last day of the same Jubilee cycle in 2023. It was on right. the last <laughs> So here the Jubilee is bookended by war and war and bookended by eclipses on both sides. Wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. Somebody's doing something and it's not random. There's a... Uh... So that, that would be the question for people. Why, With all of these things and all these events that happen on them, I think we should listen to what they mean and what God is trying to tell us. Wouldn't you say that's true? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because the nice thing, there's no false prophet can manipulate an eclipse. We, we know <laughs> during Moses' day, they tried to copy the plagues that Moses was doing. Well, you can't manipulate an eclipse. And an eclipse speaks to every language, tribe, nation, tongue, everyone knows the meaning. So that's why God said he uses it for signs. Now, you may know this, but the letter Tav, which is the last letter of Hebrew, literally means a mark or a sign. Right. And it has the numerical value of 400. It, like Roman numerals have, you know, letters for numbers, so does Hebrew. The letter Tav, which means signs, has a numerical value of 400. Well, guess what the Creator did? How in the world, think of the sun and the moon, where the sun is a 400-story building. Can you imagine a 400-story building? And next to it yeah. is a one-story building. Is the one-story building going to hide from view the 400-story building? No. no. So how come, how come my thumb can block out a building? It all has to do with size and distance. Well, guess what? You can look it up. Scientifically, the sun is exactly 400 times bigger than the moon and exactly 400 times further away, which is why we can have an eclipse and there are signs. Right. That's one of, that's one of the, it's called the, what do they call it? The security zone, the life zone, where that gives it the possibility of life growing on this planet because we have exactly those dimensions correctly. If not, the moon, our, our planet, the moon is going to fall into our planet. Our planet may lose its path or fall into the sun. It's, it's an amazing balancing act, but it oh allows God. you to see, it allows you to see eclipses, which allows you to discover so much information about the universe. People don't really understand that very much, but I know that you do. And it says in Genesis and also in Psalms that the, the heavens give forth information, they pour forth knowledge day and night, and it will be seen to every tongue in the world. Well, what is yeah. it that can be distributed to every tongue in the world? They will see these signs in the heavens. It doesn't matter what language you speak, exactly. you're going to get that knowledge. 
and uh, it says in Psalms 19, the heavens are declaring the glory of God. Right, and, uh, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people have to understand there's a big difference between astrology and biblical astronomy. Astrology is all about you. Well, I'm not interested in you. Sorry. But right. biblical astronomy is all about God. And that's what we need to look. Well, guess right. what? Right. Those are signs in the heavens. So the, the soothsayers, they are abusing the use right. of the, the heavenly signs you exactly. know, to, for their own ends, for their own ends. Exactly. But get a load of this. Now I want to talk about solar eclipses, which means judgment on the nations. There's only been 12,000 solar eclipses in 5,000 years, and you only get one total solar eclipse every year and a half also. Well, guess what? When I looked at the total solar eclipses that crossed the whole United States, not just a little corner of it, like just Florida, but across the entire United States, either horizontally or vertically, since we've become a nation, there's only been eight total solar eclipses. And guess when they fell? They fell during the Revolutionary War in the 1700s. They fell during the Civil War in the 1800s. They fell during the Vietnam War in the 1900s. And here in the 2000s, we had the Great American Eclipse exactly seven years ago that went from Oregon down through South Carolina. Now, this April 8th, we have one going vertical from Mexico through uh, United States and over to Canada. This is within seven years. We have two total solar eclipses. And I'm sure you've heard where they intersect. Yes, I have. Yes. They intersect right here where I live in Kerrville, Texas. And I will be handling the events for all the people that come, now this is the, this the, we've had two eclipses, counting this one, within six months. We had the annual yep. eclipse, and that was in October, and now less than six months later, we're having a total eclipse, which is only seven years, it's, uh, the, you have the 2017 eclipse, and right. the one that's coming this time, and, and with all these three eclipses, yes. it forms an aleph over the United States. It's exactly. incredible. Exactly. And now, the, where they intersect in Texas is in an area known as the Texas Triangle, where well, the number yes, one... Yes, now, hold, to, hold that thought. Hold that thought. I want to hear all about this, but we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment with more of this fascinating discovery about total eclipses over the United States of America. So hold on for one minute. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Miles Jones, and we have prepared for you an amazing teaching series called The Writing of God. We're going to take you to Mount Sinai and examine all of the evidence of the Exodus, both old and the newly discovered evidence that we've just brought back. Evidence that has been hidden from you for 3,500 years. Why hasn't this evidence been revealed before? pretty simple. You know there's an anti-God agenda going on in the universities. The secularists have decided that the Bible is merely a fable. The Exodus, a legend, the mountain of God, nothing but a myth. And this is what they're teaching our children in the universities. This is their major tool for stripping our children of their faith. But I can tell you, we have been there. We've been to the mountain. We've examined the evidence. We've found the footprints of the Israelites there with alphabetic inscriptions. We have translated these alphabetic inscriptions and they tell a story that comes straight from the pages of Exodus. We've been to Moses' altar. We've been to Aaron's altar of the golden calf. We've been to Rephidim and the split rock and we're gonna take you there because the truth of the Bible is something you need to know. And we have the scientific evidence of the truth of the seminal event of the Old Testament, the Sinai Covenant. And we're going to bring it to you in the writing of God. That's The Writing of God, P.O. Box 294047, Kerrville, Texas 78029, or online at thewritingofgod.com.
We are back with Mark Biltz about his new book. And the title of that is America at War 2024. That's a provocative title, but as you said, total eclipses usually foreshadow wars, right? Even lunar eclipses. It's a yes. warning, would you say? Absolutely, absolutely. And here, as we close the last segment with where it intersects in Texas, that is known mm -hmm. as the Texas Triangle, that area, which is the number one place in the United States for human slavery, human sex trafficking. Uh, and so I really see this as judgment coming on America because of our immorality that is rampant, where here the United States is participating big time in human trafficking, slavery. Well, I agree with you completely. We are only like a stone's throw from Eagle Pass here. By the way, we start enforcing the law and it's reduced it from 10,000 migrants a day down to a handful. So something is happening here in the state. But I definitely agree with you. If you, if you grab a, a child off the street, you get a free pass into the United States. Do you know how much that has skyrocketed sexual slavery in the United States, especially of children? It's inconceivable, incomprehensible uh, to, yeah. that, that that is happening and they're letting it happen. I well, think just, it is. I think we don't have to explain to our viewers what's happening in our country and the world. I think there would be very few that wouldn't look around and see the, the, the evil that has impregnated all our institutes. So oh, take it from there. We're in the well, Texas would, Triangle. The, well, the amazing thing is the next place that intersects with the 2017 okay. eclipse is in Southern Illinois, in an area known as Little Egypt. There are cities around wow. it called Kar Karnak, Goshen, Thebes, Cairo, an Egyptian health museum. And the university there has a pyramid and the god Horus as its logo. That's wow. where it's interesting. Wow. And it's right near the that... Madrid Fault, which is fascinating. Right, I've heard of that. It's in the New Madrid area where it crossed before. And that's significant. Uh, I well, would think, you, you know, for, that, for all that's going on here. Oh, but wait, there's more. Guess what else? The timing of it. You have to get on God's calendar. April 8th of 2024 is on the biblical calendar is Nisan 1. The very day that God said, this is the beginning of the year for you. It's the very day of the original plagues in the Exodus of the three days of darkness. Wow. The same wow. day. And it's happening over Little Egypt. This is a, a, a replica of the original plagues that are coming. Wow, I did wow. not know that. That's, that's yeah. incredible. There is one thing I do know about it, and you may have heard of this, is that there was a there was a total eclipse in Nineveh in 763 yeah. BC. We can retrocalculate these events, and we've used them to establish that the biblical timeline is the correct ancient timeline. Well, this happened in 76, 763 BC in Nineveh, a once great city that had fallen into yeah. iniquity. Yeah. And during this time, Jeroboam was on the throne in Egypt, and Jehovah yes. sent the prophet Jonah to Nineveh Yes. to warn them and he went and we all know about the fish what we don't know is they worship the fish Dagon in Nineveh so when he came yeah. out of the mouth of the fish they listened to him and they repented and the country was saved but the thing people don't know there was a total eclipse there were riots there were plagues and the people did repent that's a wonderful moral it's a very hopeful lesson so what does that have to do with this eclipse coming up in in uh, in April April 8th and I think you know the answer right oh yes what is amazing and what I have in my book there are a series of eight total low or of eight solar eclipses, lunar eclipses happening over the next two years. And guess when the lunar eclipses fall? On the same day of the one in Nineveh back in 763. The month of Elul is the month of repentance. Jonah's 40 days preaching repentance was from Elul 1 to Yom Kippur.
It was the same 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness. It was the same 40 day time period that Moses was up trying to make atonement for the golden calf. A month of Elul is the month of repentance. This is the same time when Jonah was talking to Nineveh. All of these are repeats of history. And guess what? That there are lunar eclipses that are happening on Elul 15, the month of repentance, and then they happen on Purim, the month of Amalek being defeated. And then the next year they happen again on Elul 15 and again on Purim with the defeat of Amalek. And the solar eclipses are falling on Nisan 1 and Tishri 1, Rosh Hashanah. Nisan 1, Tishri 1. Two years in a row, we're having these solar lunar, lunar eclipses falling exactly on the biblical holidays. Wow. That is, that is really amazing information. Let me tell you an additional thing to add into your, into your, your research. This will be at noon, 1214 in, in Texas. Now there is a Nineveh, Texas. Did you know that? Yes. The, the solar eclipse will be visible over, over uh, Nineveh, Texas within a few minutes later. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Oklahoma, a few minutes after that. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Missouri. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Ohio. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Pennsylvania. It will be visible over Nineveh, New York, and it will be visible over Nineveh, Nova Scotia. That's incredible. Yeah. Eight, eight Ninevehs on the path of the, the totality, the line of total viewing between Nineveh, Texas and Nineveh, Nova Scotia. That's yeah, uh, pretty incredible eight, connection. Well, all, in eight, all eight cities will see the total solar eclipse, but only about four in the actual 100 mile path of mm -hmm. totality, but they all will see it. But to me, the timing is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. I but agree. But wait, there are more, guess what? Tell me. Or these next two years, if you go to Numbers chapter 1 and Numbers chapter 9 and 10, the tribes of Israel were all encamped around Moses' tabernacle as God appointed them. And whenever they traveled, the east went first, then the south, then the west, then the north. And in my book, I mention how they travel. And God lined them up for war. And all had to do with war. They had to be an organized army, not some ragtag army. So when they go to leave to take the promised land, we see the order that they're leaving. And because there's 12 tribes and there's 12 months, each tribe is assigned a month. Well, I looked and the solar lunar eclipses over the next two years fall in the months of the exact order exact order wow. of how they went to war of how they went to war so over the next two years this is why i'm saying america at war 2024 through 2026 because the heavens are declaring it through the signs that god has proclaimed war is going to be coming over the whole world in the and next we, few years we'd better listen i advise all of you to get his book america at war 2024 and we're talking about Moses. Maybe you'd explain to people your T-shirt that you're wearing. Yes, I have a T-shirt that is Guns and Moses, not Guns, guns and, and Moses. Moses. Guns and Moses. So it declares, it, it show, talks about the wars that are coming. And we will, I'll be really eagerly awaiting your book, America at War 2024. And I thank you so much for being here, Mark. Well, thank we you will, so much for having me. You're a blessing. We will talk to you again soon. And right. for the rest of our viewers, hang on one moment and we'll be right back. The writing of God will continue in just a moment. Yehovah puts lights in the firmament of the heavens to record warnings and Moedim, appointed times for his people and him. And it speaks to us. Throughout the day and the night, they are constantly transmitting information to us. What does that mean? Well, we will tell you about it in our latest series of video lessons about the Moedim and the book Moedim. Go together in a bundle along with the Hebrew Gospel of Revelation, the Hebrew book of Revelation. 
which certainly talks about celestial events for the end times. All of these things in one bundle, from Jonah's eclipse when he was sent to Nineveh to implore those people to repent, and they did, saving themselves from destruction, to the celestial events at Yeshua's crucifixion, to Christopher Columbus, who was saved from the natives, angry natives, by a lunar eclipse, a blood moon. So we'll talk about the blood moons, we'll talk about the eclipses, we'll talk about how these things are used to establish the correct biblical timeline of ancient history. So go to writingofgod.com right now to get your copy. Online at thewritingofgod.com. That's online at thewritingofgod.com. I'm Dr. Miles Jones, author of The Writing of God, which explains that the seminal event of the Old Testament, of the entire Bible, really took place at the Sinai Covenant at the Mountain of God in Arabia. Now, that monumental truth has been hidden from you because many historians, archaeologists, and Bible scholars have been looking for it at the wrong place and in the wrong time. Come with me on a journey following the footprints of the Israelites to the real Mount Sinai in Arabia where the inscriptions of the Israelites are written on rocks, dramatic evidence of the truth of the Bible. Many of those inscriptions are right here surrounding the split rock of Horeb at Rephidim. The dramatic truth of the proof of the truth of the Bible, the origin of the alphabet, the true stories of Joseph, Moses, and more, all in the writing of God. Let me walk you step by step through the true timeline, the actual chronology of the Bible, and why it is exact, exactly like it says in scripture. All this at writingofgod.com. You can get the book and we will send you a free research updates newsletter. That's The Writing of God, P.O. Box 294047, Kerrville, Texas, 78029. Do it now. This is The Writing of God with Dr. Miles Jones. Now, I told you that would be good, that information for Mark Biltz. This is the guy who works on this, is a scientist. He works in this area. We have also published a book called Moedim, Celestial Events in the Heavens and What Their Meanings Are from a Biblical Archaeologist's Perspective. What is God trying to tell us? So go to our website, writingofgod.com, pick up this book. And we'll see you in the next episode of The Writing of God. Will you seek the Lord about becoming a partner to bring the message of The Writing of God to more people? Send your gift to The Writing of God, P.O. Box 294027, Kerrville, Texas 78029, or online at thewritingofgod.com. That's The Writing of God, P.O. Box 294047, Kerrville, Texas. 78029 or online at thewritingofgod.com.